In our quest to understand the style and the potential of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay on Vancouver Island, we headed to Saison Vineyard, located about 15 minutes north of the Unsworth Winery. Winemaker Dan Wright takes us on a tour of the site, where we catch up with wine growers Ingrid and Frederick, who supply the oldest Pinot Noir and Chardonnay fruit to Unsworth. Unsworth has been working with Saison since uh, the first vintage uh, in 2010, and then I started with Unsworth in 2016, so I've been working with them ever since. What do you like most about Saison? Oh, this site, I mean, is gorgeous. It's uh, got this amazing glacial till soil, uh, the south-facing aspect and slope. Uh, it's, it's sort of a bowl of, of mountains surrounding it, protecting it. You can't quite see it today just because it's a bit, it's a bit uh, cloudy out there, but mm -hmm. it's beautiful. And of course, the hard work that Frederick and Ingrid do. We like to, to call our, our farming uh, attentive farming. So the idea here is to be uh, close to the vine uh, every day that we're, we work here and then pay attention to whatever signal the vine give us and whatever signal uh, the weather uh, is, you know, bringing to the, the field. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, um, it's a team effort. We've got a beautiful crew that's been with us for uh, 12 years and more now. So every single vine of this vineyard will be uh, touched uh, individually at least nine times in one growing season, uh, from pruning to shoot thinning to uh, desaccharing to lateral removing. I find Pinot Noir does have um, its way of telling us, you know, when it needs attention. We have four different clones here on this particular block. They're all French crones. It looks a little bit like, like Burgundy here. Yeah. Oh, I, we wish. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to believe this is probably a Grand Cru. <laughs> Why not? The best way to explore any wine region is by tasting its wines. So we return to the restaurant at Unsworth to taste some current releases and find out what is the Cowichan or Vancouver Island style. Well, you have your own sub-GI now uh, in the Cowichan. Tell us a bit about how you see the Cowichan GI, say, versus some of the GIs in the Okanagan. One of the great coming-of-age moments for any wine region is when you get your official status as a wine-growing region, which the Cowichan Valley did in July of 2020. Uh, and that tip of the hat is, is, you know, really important to us because now we know we have something special. Now we know that people are looking to us to produce great wines notably Chardonnay and, and Pinot Noir. So let's talk a bit about the program and the progress that's been made already here. If we're sitting here 20 years from now, you know, Pinot Noir is going to be what we're talking about. Um, that's something that I think has already started happening. Um, I think, you know, even I see little things like when we're talking about the vintage, um, you know, with other winemakers or vineyard managers in the valley, we're not saying the variety, but we're all talking about Pinot Noir. And honestly, when I first got here to the Cowichan, what I tasted uh, from Unsworth was at the time the 2012 Pinot Noir, um, and that was in late 2015. And that was the standout to me. That was, that was you know, what made me realize, wow, there's big potential here. And I was just coming from uh, Willamette Valley in Oregon and tasting uh, those Pinot Noirs from some top producers. I worked at Beaufrere for a vintage um, there and um, I realized, wow, you know, the Cowichan Valley uh, Pinot Noir in a good vintage like 2012, and we've had a string of them since, um, they're kind of like a cool vintage of the Willamette. What also interested us were some of the other factors at play that make the Cowichan such a magical site for Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. I think the retention of that acidity and that cool climate is something that comes through in the Pinot Noir. So, um, you know, all, all our acidity is natural. And I think the, uh, the long days at our high latitude, um, so we get this great phenolic development in the skins and that's where all your flavor is that's mm -hmm. fermented on the skins uh, and then we're picking well into the late fall um, usually mid-october pick for these wines that was certainly true of the 2019s 
basic what that does is is give you I think great development and great flavor but we you know don't necessarily get these high alcohols and I think that's kind of a nice thing they don't blow off the flavors uh, they're easier to drink better with food I think you're a bit modest about yeah uh, I mean you're making 12 percent 12 yeah. and a half percent Pinot yeah. Noirs nobody's doing that yeah so I think that's part of the magic of yeah. the cowichan that you've got this long hang time, but you're mm -hmm. not accumulating a lot of sugar. That's right. But you're accumulating flavor, mm -hmm. uh, and you so the style is quite distinct. What you're going to find in Vancouver Island Pinot Noir versus, say, you know, our neighbors in the Okanagan is is this exuberant, fresh, vibrant style of Pinot. I mean, as as lovely and and fruit forward and. Uh, and, and fabulous as, as many of the Pinot Noirs from, from the Okanagan are, there's a little bit more broadness to the shoulders. There's a little bit more robustness to the tannins, whereas Pinot from the island is, is decidedly cool climate. Mm -hmm. it, it's got this, this beautiful purity of fruit. It's, it's got this complexity of, you know, I, I like to call it salal or, 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 or cedar forest notes. And you're, you're just not going to find that in, in Naramata or Okanagan Falls, uh, as, as delicious as they are. The Chardonnay stands apart as well from Okanagan style? Um, the Chardonnay is also on a marine sedimentary soil and that sort of translates into um, I think this, this minerality, this complexity, the density of the, the wine, the ageability of it. Now that we have some insight into the physical factors influencing the Cowichan Valley, it's time to look at the people and the culture of the region. In our next episode, We'll find out how it's shaping the future of Vancouver Island wine.